Good morning. Welcome to the prayer porch. I'm so excited that you're here today. I am excited because of the word that I have to share with you. This past week, it's has I have been in and out of training for my job as a, I am an instructional coach, and it's just invigorated me with excitement with what I do both at school. But I was just laying it before the Lord and said, God. I know that my purpose that you've given me in this prayer porch is in coaching, coaching those that I don't even see, coaching those so that we can come together as a team, so that we can come together and live this life that you've planned for us and make a difference in this world and lift him up so high that he is glorified in all that we do, that when people see us, I don't want you to see, oh, there's Lori. No, I want you to say, oh, oh. Do you know what? I don't remember her name, but I know she gave me something that showed me God even closer. That's my goal. And that's what I hope is happening for you in the prayer porch. And our scripture today was just so perfect. It just took my whole week and just wrapped it in a package and put a pretty bow on the top. And I want to share it with you today. If you have your scriptures, get it out and look at 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 2, and Paul is writing to the Corinthians here. And in this particular chapter in particular, he is talking specifically about how he realizes, and I just could relate to this so much, because he says, when I first came to talk to you, I just wanted to share with you, and I knew that God wanted me to share with you, but my words just seem simple and plain. But as God continues to work in this, and as God continued to work in his ministry, he was in awe at the things that was coming from his mouth because he realized that God allowed his spirit to speak through him. And that's us so many times on my prayer porch. When I come out here, I film, I don't know if you realize it at all, you probably don't unless, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I always go back and listen to my own prayer porch. And every time I do, I'm like, I didn't know I said that. No, someone needs to write that down. That was really good. And it was because it wasn't me. I want you to realize so much. I pray so much before I turn on this video. I pray and I just say, Lord, please make your words come out of my mouth and behind my words up so that you know who's listening. You know what they need. You know where their heart is. You know where their hurt is. I want you to minister to them. I want you to be there for them. And I want you to use that. And Lord, if I'm one of those, I want my root to go deep. So I want you to take that and just pull that root down into the cistern of your word so that I can increase the value of the oil in my lamp so that when you come, I'm ready. And that's sort of what Paul's doing here in um, 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he is telling the people, he said, my words were plain, but when I go back and I see what I've said and I see the scripture, I see where God keeps revealing more and more of himself. And that's why having the Holy Spirit is such a wonderful gift. When Jesus, when I, I think it's awesome when Jesus said, I'm going to leave you with a gift. When I go... One better than me is going to return to you. And that's hard to fathom. Someone better than Jesus. And he says, I'm going to send someone even better than me. He said, "Because and it's a gift. And it's wonderful. I think it's beautiful that we call it the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because it's a gift to us. We've done nothing to deserve it. And yet God says, I'm going to pour my spirit. Now get that. That's what I want you to hear. I'm going to pour my spirit out on you. That's the key word in today's verse. Because Paul wants us to realize that the spirit that's been poured out on us is the spirit of God. And that's a powerful spirit. So let's look here in chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians. And I want you to read it with me here. Um, it says, uh, I'm going to dibble dabble in the first verses, but I want to really get to where I'm at. Because he starts in verse 2 and he says, I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except for Jesus Christ. And we talked about that yesterday, not getting caught up in the busyness of who we are. We know if, we, if you study Paul's life, Paul was an important person. And as an important person, he was key. I'm sure he was busy. I'm sure he was busy. And yet he says, without getting caught up in the busyness, I want to, and I don't want to forget anything. I want to forget everything else except for Jesus Christ. He says, I came to you in weakness. I was timid. I was trembling. My message and my preaching were very thin. Rather than using clever, rather than using clever and persuasive um, speeches, 
I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I did this so that you would trust him and that you would not trust human wisdom, and the, but yet you would trust in the power of God. So then he comes down in the verse I want, I'm going to skip down a couple verses because I want to really look at this next verse where he quotes the Old Testament. And he says, um, <clears throat> the rulers of this world have not understood this word. If they had, they would not have crucified the glorious Lord. Then he goes, he says, but he says, uh, the scripture, that is exactly what the scriptures meant when they said, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no eye has seen and no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined, we can't even imagine, what God has prepared for the lives of those who love them. Think about that. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind can even imagine what God has prepared, now put your name in there, for Lori, because she loves him, for you, because you love him. You can't imagine what he has prepared for you. It's too great for our minds to fathom, but we put ourselves in a box. We're the only, I, I tell my students all the time and my teachers, the only thing you can't do is what you tell yourself you can't do. If I tell myself my knees are aching, I can't get up, then I'm not gonna get up. But if I say, you know what? I'm gonna grab these achy knees and I'm gonna get up and walk. It's interesting, I didn't think about this till just now. When Jesus was healing people, he would always say, do you wanna be healed? <laughs> that seems like a crazy question. Do you want to be healed? Yeah. <laughs> do you? Because if you wanna be healed, you're going to have to tell yourself, I can be healed. Start telling yourself, I can. There's no reason I can't. The Spirit of God's in me. I can do this. I can have the courage to do what is right when it's so hard. To say what I need to say when that's hard to say sometimes. The only thing you can't do is what you tell yourself you can't. And if you're doing it in the spirit and you are doing it to glorify his kingdom, then it's really the only thing that you can't do is what you say you can't. Because we're told here, your eyes can't even see it. Your ears, there's no way for them to hear and understand. There's no mind that can imagine what God has prepared for you, if you love him. What a promise. What a promise. And then this next part just tells you how deep that goes. It says, but it was on it was it was on us that God revealed these things by his spirit. Now this is awesome. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deepest secret. Well, if I woke up this morning and told you, hey, I have a way to let you know God's secrets. Oh, yeah, his secrets of what he has for you. Do you want it? You want to hear it? And it says, are you ready? No one can know a person's thoughts except for a person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except for God's own spirit. And yet, we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, that we can know the wondrous things that God has freely, freely given us. There is so much power in that word power that we have been given to our fingertips that says, hey, I want to do a good work in you. And there's another scripture that tells us, he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. He wants to fulfill that. He wants to pour it out on you and use you in ways way 
bigger than you can imagine. You just have to want it. You just have to say, I can. I can do that because the Spirit of God is in me. God, reveal to me what you have for me. Reveal to me what you created in me to do. Lord, you knew I was going to take a breath this day. So you revealed to me what you wanted to me to do in this day that's exceedingly more abundantly than I can think or imagine. Because what we think and imagine doesn't even touch the tip of what God has for you. The only thing you can't do in Christ is what you tell yourself you can't do in Christ. That's the secret to success. Because you have a direct line to the heart of God. I guess that makes us his heartstrings. He loves you. And he has great things for you. All you have to do is say, I can. I will. Daddy, I want what you have for me. Show me what you have for me. Bring it alive in my life. I'm telling you, this day is going to be a different day. When we jump out of bed and we say, yes, Jesus. I want to be healed. I want to be healed from negative thoughts. I want to be healed from a low self-esteem, which is crazy. I can't believe I fight. I want to be, I want to be healed from me telling myself, oh, how many times did I say, oh, I'm just old and crickety. No, you're not. My goodness, you live for eternity. You're just a young chicken. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. All those spirits, just, all those scriptures just keep pouring into my brain as I say this. Look how they all line up. That tells me we're on the right path. So go get them. You can do this. You can do this. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and realize you're really a superhero. Amazing superhero for the kingdom. So let's go. Go fight win. We got this. Have a wonderful day. And a beautiful weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. If you were encouraged today, give me some likes. Give me some likes. That helps. And share this. This is a message that really needs to be shared. Share and encourage a friend and tell them, hey, I just want you to know you can do this. You've got this. You've, he's got this in you. It didn't take him by surprise. We got this. Love you. See you Monday.